All right, a lot of people talking, certainly in the newsroom. I was sitting there watching, particularly when the 11 o'clock advisory came out. So, and, I, yeah. <laughs> and then you're answering a million questions from us. Wait, wait, what was that again? And then, Tell me that again. And then the phone and then the email. Yeah. Listen, there's a lot of questions, yeah. and we're trying to get out to uh, all of the answers that we have, at least right now. Uh, some of your questions kind of go down the road a little bit, and we it's a wait and see for some point. Others that we can answer, of course, we're glad to do those, whether it's email or even some of those quick phone calls. But yeah, I felt like the uh, I felt like the sock with the static <laughs> static cling. It was stuck to everything right at 11 o'clock. 145 mile an hour wind as this this thing has already made landfall, and yes, it's out toward the. Uh, little um, peninsula here as it's moved through. I mean, this thing is just going to continue to move right through the gap, still spreading in lots of wind and rainfall through Haiti into Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, and then sailing into the uh, Abacos really is still a very strong major and major starts at category three. So here's three at 125. I and mean, we're still at 130 mile an hour winds here as Matthew will be exiting the Bahamas. That makes that entry point getting into uh, we'll call it the shared waters here, Florida coastal waters especially, uh, where we'll still see the uh, major impact. I'm going to break down the wind here in just a moment, but I want to show you just to go back to the path. So here's the line. This is what I was saying. So the entry point's the same. It does veer out to the west just a little bit, and then it starts to come back, and then there's where the overlap takes place, where it merges back to the original line from 5 o'clock this morning, and then a little deeper through South Carolina, and into uh, North Carolina. So it does look like we'll uh, see the brunt of that impact into the Carolinas. Let's go with the wind probabilities. I've got the wind set up here in this particular graph for tropical storm force winds, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. And as you see here where the colors kind of merge in, this is where we're up to about a 50%. But if you look right along the coastline here, that uh, sort of a, a magenta-ish kind of purplish sort of color, does move right along our immediate beaches. So I've been talking a lot about the coast, our coastal areas versus that of the inland areas. You can see why we're separating the 60% chance that you could see some tropical storm force winds versus that of 50. And then by the time you get to 301 in the spine of the state, this is going to continue to drop down. I'm going to show you in a different numerical map coming up in just a moment. This would be the hurricane wind probability, 10%, 20%. So we're kind of closer to about the 10% in Jacksonville, but as you get up to the beaches, here's where that chance does start to go up. Not quite a full 20%, though at least um, kind of pushing that direction, which means that out of a 10, say there's 10 big gusts that come through, two of those gusts have the potential to be hurricane force. Now, let me 